Hey, hey everybody, welcome back to another Dice Tower review. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. Today we're taking a look at a solo, mainly solo or two player game from Shaddy Torby. Uh, this is Stellarion. Stellarion is part of a series of games, all for one or two players, uh, from the same designer and now from this designer as a publisher as well. Impatience over here being the uh, publisher is uh, a line now that belongs to the publisher before these came out from Z-Man Games. And in fact, this is the first one that is published now only under this uh, publishing brand. Is it still good? Was there some sort of difference from having published under Z-Man or published under Impatience? Well, let's take a look at how the game works and we'll come on back and tell you. The game comes with a few different modules, as you can see here. There are some uh, of the cards that are going to be used by those modules. You've got some tiles that will be used by those, including even a board that will be used by one of the modules. And you can mix and match all of these. You can throw them all in. But for our purposes here today, I'm going to be showing you the game without any of these extras. We're going to take a look at just the basic game, all right? In the game, what you are trying to do is, uh, if you're playing solo, uh, get to all of these, launch uh, these rockets to all of these galaxies, go on these expeditions, you need to do two per galaxy, okay? So we have the piles shuffled up and set up here. Uh, each of these is going to have the top four represent a specific galaxy, and in each of these decks we're going to have two of each of the four things we need to launch a rocket. We are going to need the rocket itself, this galaxy, the star there, and the planet, okay? And obviously these all belong to the same uh, voyage, which is represented by the Greek letter there, all right? So we can shuffle these up, set that right there. These down here are a little different. This deck has the voyages, the, the rockets rather, for all four of these galaxies. So there's two of each of the colors, right? There is two for alpha, two for beta, and so on. So that's what this is, and these other three would be the same thing then, but for the respective things, the planet, galaxy, and so on. So, we are going to reveal the top card of each of them, and then we are ready to begin. And again, we are going to win if we can launch these eight times. We lose if we are unable to take an action on our turn. And on your turn, you get to do one of two things. You can launch, and that gets you one of these. To do that, you need to have available to you on top of the stacks all four of the things you need for a single color. If you manage to have that, you can discard those corresponding cards, and each deck will have its own discard pile, like so. You just put it there. If you manage to do that, and I have, say, all four orange things, the galaxy, the planet, the ship, and so on, then I will earn this one, and I can remove that. So that's option one. Option two, which you'll need to do very frequently, of course, is called coordinate. And in order to coordinate, you need to discard two cards from on top of their piles that have the same symbol. So I could discard planet, planet here, or I could discard... Uh, uh, this star and this star. Now if I discard these two, I'm going to get some ability. And on the back of the rule book here, they describe the four different abilities that you can have based on what you discard. Okay? The difference with these two being discarded and these two being discarded is that these two cards are identical. And you are going to get a better effect if the two cards you discard as you coordinate are identical cards. So for example, all right, let's go through these and I'll explain what they all kind of do. So two rockets that do not match. If you discard that, you get to search through one deck for the card of your choice, shuffle the deck, put that card on top. If they do match though, you get to do that twice. You can do that to two different decks, okay? If you are doing the galaxies, they do not match. You have to choose a card from a discard pile and shuffle it back into its corresponding deck. 
If it's two matching galaxies, you can choose two cards from that discard pile and shuffle them in. Now again, that's two cards from the same discard pile into that deck. The stars here is you choose a deck, you shuffle it, you look at the top two cards, you put one on top, the other one on the bottom. You have to do that. And if they do not match, you can do that twice. If they do match, you can do that four times. It does not have to be to the same deck. You can change your mind as to which deck you do it to after every single one of those times. And then lastly, we've got this one right here with the planets. You can put a card from the observatory, that's this, in the outpost. That is an area over here that's going to hold cards for you. If the planets match, you can do that twice. Anything in the outpost can be used as though it was on top of a deck. But you can, you can have any number of cards over here, technically. Um, but you can only have one type of, of uh, location, so meaning one color, right? One galaxy, what have you. Uh, expedition. Uh, and you can not have the same card twice. So I could not have over here, if I have this card in the, uh, in the outpost, I cannot also put this one in the outpost. These two are identical cards. All right, so that's the idea. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, line up some things here. So, for example, on my first turn, I might discard this card and discard that one. This is my, uh, my first action there, my coordinate action, and the planets, it lets me know here, say I can put one card from the observatory into the outpost. All right, so what color might I be going for here? Well, I've got two orange cards at the top, and I know this deck is fully orange, so I might move this over here and then see what I get, okay? So that's it. That's my first action. At the end of that action, I reveal the top card of every pile, like so. And now I've got planet, rocket, galaxy for that color. That's fantastic. I could try now to move this card over here as well, and see what else I get, or I could try to find the missing thing. The missing thing I know is a star, and I know that it's in this deck twice, and well, it's in this deck twice as well. Those are the two places I could find that card, right? How do I get to it? Uh, that's the trick. Now, another thing to point out is these shooting stars. At the beginning of the game, based on how difficult you want the game to be, you can give yourself a number of these. And you can use them once per game and once per turn to count as a missing thing whenever you launch uh, one of these expeditions. So right now, if I wanted to, I could launch with that one, that one there, and that one, and use this star as the missing piece. You can use only one, though, every time, but they do give you a whole bunch of these. So that you can make the game as easy as you want to, or as difficult as you want to, by giving yourself none of these at all. Alright, so my next action again is looking for that star right now. Uh, how can I accomplish that? Well, I could try to um, discard these two here, which do match, and that lets me put two cards in the observatory. Okay, I'm going to do that. Discard that. I discard that. And I'm going to move this card over. And I can move another one over. I'll go ahead and move that one. Again, I cannot mix colors over there. So even though this is not necessarily this one moving, is not necessarily that important. Well, I didn't have a really other good option. So then I'm done. I flip over the top cards of all of these, like so. And I get to go again. And I should have that one card. Um, or a, a shooting star. All right. So next up, I could do... Um, Let's go ahead and go with these two stars. I'm going to discard this one, and I'm going to discard this one. That, the star power lets me know, are matching. I could four times choose a deck, shuffle it, look at the top two, put one face down on the bottom, the other one on top. I'm going to do it to this deck. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to shuffle it. I'm going to reveal the top two. What I'm looking for is not there, unfortunately. So fine, I put one on top, the other on the bottom. Second time, I'm doing it here again. All right, and again, I get to do this four times. So I'm going to shuffle this one. I'm going to look. Got it. All right, one of these on top, the other on the bottom. I've done that twice. Now I get to do it uh, a third and fourth time. I've got this one kind of lined up for me. I'm missing the planet. 
So I'm going to go fishing for that planet in here. I already discarded one, so it's a little more rare in this deck. But, you know, we'll try to, we'll try to get it. Here we go. It's not one of those. And I'll try it again. This is my fourth time. And this is what you're doing, basically setting up opportunities, lining things up for yourself. Oh, did not get it. Okay. If I had gotten it, that would have been pretty sweet. And again, what I was looking for was this card ending up on top, giving me another one. Boom, 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 boom. Right there. But it didn't come up. All right. That's it. End of that, my turn. I flip over this and I flip over that. And then I could complete one of these by doing these three. And now, either one of these, really. So I might as well use this one uh, or use this one. You know, whatever. Those four are going to go to their respective discard piles. And then I take this card, remove it, and I'm one-eighth of the way there. That's what I'm trying to do to all eight of these, okay? Once I do that, I win. If I cannot take one of the two actions, coordinate by discarding two matching things, or launch a thing, if I cannot do that on my turn, I lose the game, okay? The only difference for a two-player game is that... They recommend you have more of these. Uh, they give you three. If you're the first game, they say you should take three. And you're going to go back and forth taking actions, doing one of those two things. And then the other thing is, each player can only have two colors. So you do not need to decide what colors they are at the beginning of the game. But if right now I had taken a turn and taken this one, that means this other one, I need to be the one to do that one too. It cannot be my playing partner who gets this one. Let's say on their turn, they get this one. Okay, I know I cannot take that. So I'll end up with two colors. Perhaps I'll get all of these, and perhaps I'll get all of these, and then my, my uh, playing partner needs to take the other ones. Okay? If we manage to do that, then we win the game. So there you go. Uh, as you can tell, the game is kind of a deck manipulation, pile management. Is that a thing? Pile management. You can That's call it that, sure. Piles yeah. management. Mm -hmm. Add it to BGG now. That's right. Done. Um, and it feels a little bit like some of the previous games, I would say. So, you know, we were talking about this a little bit, mm -hmm. and we sort of thought we're going to try not to compare them too much, but if you're interested in this game, you likely know some of the other ones, or might be interested in them. So the very first one, which I believe the designer pronounces Onirim, um, is probably the biggest, best known one of the bunch. I would agree with that. It has yeah. the app that a lot of people play on. It has an app. Yeah. I think you know, most, most people know that one if they know one of this line. Right. right. And this one, I would say of all the ones that have come after, there's five or six, is the closest to that original one, I would say. Mm. I would agree. This, this, you know, again, you said we're not going to compare them too much, and I suppose we'll try not to, but it's it's hard to remove all of those games that I've played out of the context of this review. Right. Um, so, yeah, this reminds me the most of, uh, do you say? Oh, oh, near him, oh, I near him, I always get it wrong, and Arion. Those are the two yeah. previous games that this reminds me the most of. Yeah, and... Um, Mechanically speaking, I think this one is uh, not necessarily setting the world on fire. Mm. This idea of manipulating a bunch of little decks is doesn't seem as aha as, for example, a die rolling game, which mm -hmm. was Arion, in which if you want to re-roll some of the dice, you need to discard a card, but that card was the very thing you were trying to win with the dice. Aha! Mm -hmm. I didn't find this that the me central mechanism here to be as big of an aha thing. Right. It's just kind of a... It's like a matching game, mm -hmm. almost. You know, yeah. Okay, I want to get four of a kind, but I have to use two of a kinds in the meantime to get to four of a kind. I'm simplifying a lot, yeah, obviously. Yeah, of but course, it's, right. That's just kind of what it feels like as you're doing it. It took me, you know, the first half of my first play, I think, to just feel like... Where is this going? Like, what's the cadence here? What's happening? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. You said that you felt like the central mechanism um, wasn't the most, you know, groundbreaking. Yeah. The interesting thing is that the the game, the the base rules of the game, is the central mechanism and That's nothing it, else. Right. There's nothing yeah. else. Um, and and you know, I did a little bit of background. You know, actually before I even played the game and read a couple of designer diaries and things yeah. like that. And uh, if I remember correctly, the, the the idea was, hey, can I basically take a mechanism and turn it into a game? 
Mm -hmm. And so that's what they did with the base, just the, the base rules. All of these games in this Oniverse series are modular in the sense that you've got yeah. kind of the core rules and then you can add modules to them. Right. Um, and I think this one, more than any of the others, needs to have those modules included. Um, you know, that's that's something that yeah. I do feel like stands out with this one compared to the others. And it's funny, you know, this impatience label, this this new label. Um, this game feels most like patience version of solitaire. Right. You know what I mean? So that's right. kind of an interesting thing. It's like I wonder because this really feels like, you know, just manipulating these little, you know, piles or or, yeah. or deck deck management. Um, but if that's all there was to the game, <clears throat> I would have a problem with that. I agree, and it is not, um, it's also something that you should know right now. If you do not like shuffling small decks of cards, yeah. if you're one of those people who says, can you shuffle two cards? Is that a thing? You may not want to play this game. <laughs> right. Because it's a, the biggest they'll be is eight? Eight, I think. No, they no, could have extra, get the cards. extra cards. So the biggest they'll be is 10. Right. And they will dwindle. The mm -hmm. end of the game in this game sometimes does have you shuffling a deck that has three cards, putting it back, flipping a card, then burning that card, and adding two back into that little deck of two cards. Now it's four and shuffling that. So everything feels little. Everything mm -hmm. is sort of like, the, you know, and I thought to myself when I first played it, maybe the idea was to take Onirim and not shuffle as much. That game right. is sort of infamous for mm -hmm. a lot of shuffling. This is a lot of shuffling. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a lot right. of shuffling in this. It's just smaller little piles, right. which can be a little more fiddly. Mm -hmm. I suppose, yeah, it, it took me, like I said, after that <clears throat> first half of my of the first time I played it, I did kind of reach a turnaround point where I realized, oh god, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to be shuffling a lot of these little piles. Mm -hmm. But it's neat because the the way they have you discard the cards, you get to see right. what is out of each little mm -hmm. deck, and so I thought, okay, I, I'm I'm starting to get it. You know exactly what three cards are left in there. Yeah, you can always see in every one of the eight decks, you know exactly what's there. Right. So I'm shuffling to take this chance, but I should have a really good idea of what that chance is I'm taking going into it. Uh, but. Uh, I yeah, it's a lot it, of little manipulation. The statistics of the decks, like the the sort of the math of the game, mm -hmm. is really nice. Sure, I really uh, like this idea of you need four different things right. to fly. You got to do that eight times. Each deck is made up of either the galaxy or whatever it is, like the you know the the flight color, right, or the symbol every color. Mm -hmm. Just the math of it. The symmetry of it, the, the elegance of that system yes. is very nice. And I agree with you. I love that idea of looking at the discard and going, both the orange galaxies are still in the galaxy right. deck. I should not I should get rid of the gal you know, the orange pile is showing galaxy right now. Mm -hmm. I don't need it. You know, right. there's two more in the bank right here. I'll use that for one of my actions. Yeah, yeah I'll get rid of that, right. I think the elegance of that again is is cannot be under undersold. I think the flip side of that, with the two symbols meaning something and being discarded, is a little clutchy. I wish there was a a player aid card, single two card. of them. Well, two yeah for two players. It's on the back of the rule book, it's, which is good. It's <laughs> nice, not super legible. The smallest font they could have gone with. Uh, I mean, that is tiny. That is very that is, small. That is pretty small, you know? yes. And there's not a lot and of You can't see that there, there but yeah, yeah. yeah. Low contrast, very tiny writing. This should have been in more places. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. They don't, they're not easy to internalize. None of this stuff, I don't think, oh, if I discard two planets, I don't know what it does. So you know what I mean? Like <laughs> they don't they don't make sense. It doesn't, mm -hmm. there's not like an easy, oh, this symbol looks like a recycling can. Oh, that's the one that recycles cards back in. Uh, I haven't found any shorthand like that. Right. So, um, 
I agree that with the expansions, and we should talk talk about those a little bit, yeah. the game livens up a bit more. The the modules that come in the box, to clarify. And that's, yes. that's an important point to make, because, you know, if we were just reviewing the base rules, it would have a different score than I'm going to end up giving it. Very A different. pretty significant difference. I agree. But these are not extra things you have to buy. They're in every box of this game. This is mm -hmm. not a Kickstarter edition. This is the version of the game. And so what we're talking about is basically a modular game, like... Pretty much everything in this in this series. Right. But as I said er earlier, there are certain games in the line where I've really only explored the expansions or the modules once or twice because I felt like the base game was robust enough. Was good to go. This isn't that. Mm -hmm. But especially one or two of the modules, I think, really elevate the experience significantly above that base core rule set. Mm -hmm. um, I've already forgotten the names of most of them, but but I think my favorite of the modules is the last one that involves the board and the Glock, Glockuous Sun. Or the Glock, Glockus Sun. Glockus Sun, that's what it's yeah. called. Unless you're from England where it's pronounced, pronounced Gloss Sun. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's probably my favorite of the modules, and yeah. I think that I will always play with that. I think uh, I agree, because it has a push and pull tension to it. Every mm -hmm. time you do actions, you move forward on this track that could end the game. You could sacrifice an action to move back. Right. When I first read that, I thought, I'm going to hate this. <laughs> but you move back more than you move forward. Yes. yes. So right. it's about when do I sacrifice an action? And do you I could also stop really early to get a bonus, which is nice, too. It's a nice little decision point, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I like that mixed with the mirrors and orbits over here, mm -hmm. uh, which is... A wild card right. only for triggering abilities. That's yeah. all it does, mm -hmm. right? Um, so yeah, I think the, the little modules that are included in here do liven up the whole thing. Um, and we should probably get to final thoughts at this point, unless you guys have anything else to add on to it. No, I will say that. If, the one thing I'll say, though, is that when I read some of the module descriptions, I thought, I don't know if I'm going to like that. Mm -hmm. Then I ended up liking it. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, it's the same thing with the, with Glockus Sun and the, yeah. that one that's like, oh, shuffle a card in here. But you also have to, um, you have to complete the launches in order. Now. Right, from you, bottom to top, right? A designated yeah. order. I was like, oh, I'm going to hate that. <laughs> I was like, oh, that actually, ooh, oh, interesting. Like yeah, every yeah. time I thought I was going to dislike something the modules added, and I'm kind of elevating. I think the game is is the word they use, Mike. Mm. And there's a lot of repetition here from from some of the previous games, and yes. maybe not one to one, but the ideas presented in some of the previous modules in some of the previous games, sure. mm. like lining things up, and you have to now do them in order. Sure, that's in Onira. I mean, that's yeah. old. Um, one thing I do want to mention, which you reminded me of before we jump into the final thoughts here, is the rule book itself mm -hmm. is not as clear as I would have liked. For some reason, there's a lot of leaps of logic, uh, organization issues, just um, a lack of clarity that I had to puzzle a little bit through. And I know these games. Yeah. I understand how they work. I, I'm, a, I'm worried a little bit if somebody's coming to this one as the first one they've ever played I agree. from this designer. Mm -hmm. Just some strange stuff, like, you know, the two-player rules are barely in here. It just seems like they um, they don't really explain it very well, to the, to the point that they don't even tell you take turns. Yeah, they don't the two-player rules structure. say, follow the solo rules with the following exceptions, two more shooting stars, and then gameplay. Um... As far as I can tell, nowhere does it say you go back and forth. Things like that should be in the rule book. You know, um, I don't know. I just found it mushy. I found the rule book a little mushy for the sake of being artsy, maybe. Mm. You know, and that's something I would caution against. Hmm. I, I would agree. I felt like there were some assumptions made that people are going to come be coming into this game with some pre-existing knowledge mm -hmm. of how deck management works. Um, yeah, I felt like they could have been a little bit more explicit in those rules. Right. Like, everything you need to know necessarily is kind of there, but I wish they'd been more explicit about it. I agree. There you go. All right, so, uh, Mike, you want to start it off? Sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and start it off. So, so as I mentioned earlier, I cannot... I just can't look at this outside of the realm of the whole series mm -hmm. because, you know, I've played all of the games in this line, and so I think that it is normal to compare it somewhat to other games in the I line. And, yeah. and so I, I just have to put that out there that, you know, I, this is 
within that bubble. Um, I feel like this is probably in the mid-tier of, of the games in this line. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it is one that has a little bit more uh, subtlety to it than I first, after the first game, I was like, okay, where's the game? I, I don't really see where the game is here. Then I incorporated some of those modules and I was like, okay, so I kind of see where this is going. I felt like this is as close to, other than maybe uh, Onirum, as close to a riff on classic solitaire card games yeah. that the designer has ever done. Yeah. And I love patience, honestly. I love just straight up patient solitaire. <laughs> um, and so I do like that core mechanism. I'm really glad that the uh, modules were added because I could not have recommended it without those. And I would not recommend it just as the core game. But with those modules in there, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a seven. It is one that I will continue to play. I don't think it's gonna have the legs. It's not gonna have the depth of some of the other mm -hmm. games in this line. I don't know this is one I'll be coming back to in, in five years like I have with some of the other games in this line. But it is a, a, a solid game, mid-tier of, of this designer's. I'm also giving it a seven. Uh, for me, this is bottom tier. Mm. I just really like this series. Yeah. Um, mm. This is definitely, say, second from the bottom. Mm. There's only one I can think of that I like less than this one. But, and it is subtle. It's incredibly subtle. Yeah. I also think that means it makes a pretty bad first impression. <laughs> okay? I would not recommend this to someone who is not into this series already. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't. Get one of the other five right. that are more interesting, more clever than this one, less subtle for one thing. Because, you know, yeah, that subtlety is interesting, but not when you need to discover it and that first impression leaves you thinking, where's the game? Mm -hmm. um, I should be able to quickly understand the game from that first play, get a good feel for it, think, oh, this is neat. And then the module should do that. Make me, you know, walk a, a tight line, right? That, that uh, high tension act. But it's a seven because I do enjoy it and I do keep coming back to it. And Endgame is pretty good stuff. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. need to get that last voyage or two, two decks are gone. I'm right now just the one symbol I have learned is the galaxy because that galaxy puts <laughs> cards back in the piles. Yeah, you need that. Boy, I don't ooh, see. You I need galaxies. Yeah, you need them bad. So I'm like, okay, which deck has galaxies even? Mm -hmm. that, that, okay, those are gone. Shuffle two back in. One of those is for sure going to be a galaxy because I need to discard that too. And you have to start rescuing cards from the discard yes. piles. Mm -hmm. That feels good. So. That's what it gets. That that's what gets it. That seven for me. That end game is a good feeling. So there you go. Very good. I'm coming to seven point five because, like you two, I played the base game regular playing the first time, and I thought this is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but those modules really do it. So this is a hard thing where it doesn't make the best first impression. For the sake, if if you're learning this, I think for your sake, you should probably play one time, just the basic rules, so that you understand the mechanism. Right. And then throw in the modules as you wish. You know, mm -hmm. you can throw two of them together. You can throw all of them together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's going to kind of keep me coming back is just what is modules one and four combined going right. to be like? And I like mm -hmm. I've, I've combined several of them already, and it's quite fun. It really mm -hmm. elevates it. You know, and, yeah. and that uh, that clutchiness, that negative of the I still you said what does the planets do? And I thought I just played this twice last <laughs> night again. I still can't remember which one of the planet action right. is. It's the outpost, Chris. I think it's where you place it in the thing, right? Yeah, put him aside. Yeah, yeah. I also but you're forget, right. It's so hard, I also right? forget difference between outpost and observatory. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. They're those yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. But it's a good, clever card game. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing, like you said, the sun, the Glaucus sun, mm -hmm. where it adds the tension. I think right. that's the other thing about the just the basic vanilla version is you don't feel tension. It's right. really easy to win. It's pretty easy to win the base game. Yeah, yeah. you, you got to spice it up. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, putting that sun, putting that track, I like tracks, mm. competing incentives to keep taking good actions, but you move closer towards losing, or you can go back, you can get those bonus tokens. That, to me, is is almost the game. Right. Right. Vanilla right. plus the, the Glaucus sun, yeah. and then I'll throw in one other little module. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 So there you go, folks. That is Stellarion, which, uh, from the sounds of everyone here, requires, funny enough, a little patience. <laughs> As you are getting to learn it, it's going to have not a great first impression. But we all do recommend it. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks very much. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. And we will catch you on the next one. Go for the stars.